So today we're going to talk about why Europe is concerned about a food crisis, why we're not, and I'm going to show you how to make some awesome food with some freeze-dried wholesaler stuff. Let's get started. All right, folks, welcome back. Now, what you see in front of you is the pretty much the recipe for some, I, uh, one of the things I like to make, which is Mongolian ground beef noodles. And we're going to be using the ground beef from freeze-dried wholesalers. I do have it hydrating back there. It's probably been about 20, 30 minutes. It'll be all ready. And I do have some other stuff here. Now, I do want to let you know that freeze-dried wholesalers also sells an entire thing of spices. It's an entire kit that you can get put together. Um, you can check his website down below. My link's going to save you 15% on anything you buy there. But if you was worried about storing spices, I mean, I store this stuff as well as regular spices. I've never had a problem with any of my spices going bad. This bouillon is a year old already. Um, the kikamon sauce, I've never had soy sauce go bad on me. Hoisin sauce has always been fine. You know, organic uh, spices and stuff, always been good. So you can choose which way you want to do it. It's a little bit cheaper to buy them individually, or you can buy the whole thing and be stocked up and not worry about it. Uh, but what I want to talk about mostly before we start cooking today is what Europe is doing to prepare for some kind of a food crisis they're worried about. Now, what they've been doing is wargaming this food crisis. Governments of the European Union have been engaged in what they call war games to simulate and foresee a global food crisis. They're basically going on a mix of factors. You have the Russia-Ukraine war impact on grain supplies there. You got weather events like El Nino and La Nina and their impact on Latin America's soy output. And the farmers' protests, the uh, anti-EU farmers' protests, which have disrupted supermarket supply chains. So they're kind of worried about that. There's also a perfect example of how drastically a pandemic can interfere with supply chains. Panic buying was the trend two years ago. I mean, we went to the store and there was nothing there. So that could also be part of it. If there's a little hint of something going wrong, people start to panic buy now. They've been trained to do that. So Bloomberg kind of detailed the conference that Brussels had last month where they envisioned a uh, 2004 to 2005 food shortage in Europe. So basically they're, they, what they found was they put together 60 European Union government officials, which is probably kind of scary, and then food security experts and industry representatives and a few journalists. And they kind of wargamed the idea of what would happen. OK, so one of the gentlemen that ran the system model and designed the whole thing uh, basically told participants to expect a level of chaos and caution that they'll be confused at times and they won't have enough information. That's something to remember as a prepper. You know, you're not always going to know what's going on. A really good EMP burst that takes out all your electronics, no matter how well you protected them. Again, EMP is really unknown. We don't know. A uh, power outage in your town overnight that you think, ah, oh, it's just a local power outage. Turns out to be a nationwide one when you wake up in the morning. You never know. There's going to be times where you're going to be confused. So this report underscored that some of the best fed regions in the world are now busy stress testing their food systems. So some of the scenarios put before the participants in the event were harvest failures, Palm oil exports cuts. Uh, Asia's palm oil limits are now reducing supplies of daily staple margarine to bread. Uh, allegations of corporate greed, disinformation, and conspiracy theories have been spreading about it. So, you know, over there, they're really worried about conspiracy theories. Uh, fertilizer crisis. Fertilizer and the energy needed to grow crops and keep, uh, you know, greenhouses going and running has been kind of hard in the wake of the Ru Russia's invasion of the Ukraine. In their war game, they say unrest in the streets will, you know, will hit and then shortages will hit. And basically, I'm, I'm reading from the argument uh, from the uh, from the study. It says things will unravel further till 2025. Thieves and looting supermarkets. Uh, police struggle to contain the riots and spreading in, uh, that are spreading in cities. Police in Germany can't find fish and meat at the grocery stores. Livestock farmers are going bankrupt. So this is really, you know, they kind of war game this out. What I want to know is how come, you know, the European Union is so concerned about this, yet we're not really worried about it. And if you ask the average person or the average government official, they'd be like, ah, nothing's going to happen to our food. That was just a one time thing. That's why I tell people if you're brand new and you haven't stored food, start thinking about the easiest way to do it. And the easiest way to do it isn't always freeze-dried. You know, this is a freeze-dried video. I'm showing you this food. But I'm telling you, go to the store and buy something. Buy some canned goods. Start getting ready now, even if it's $10 a week. So after reading that, I kind of thought, you know, this would be a good time to show you this stuff, show you how easy it is to cook it and put together something that's really tasty and also give me a reason to rotate this out and buy some more so anyway let me get this set up and i'll show you what i'm going to make this is a mongolian ground beef and noodles if you ever had mongolian beef in a restaurant 
It's kind of similar to that. So we're going to get it set up and try it Quickly, out. Quickly, I'm going to go over the ingredients here, of course. First off, freeze-dried ground beef. This stuff's really good. I've had it hydrating now in about 25 minutes or so since we've been starting the video and getting set up. And I'm just going to dump that water off. It's pre-cooked. I'm going to put it in the pan. So some of the recipe that I used for this won't be needed. You don't need to cook the meat. It'll already be cooked, so you can just add your ingredients in. Uh, of course, I have bouillon. This stuff's really awesome. It has a decent shelf life. Better than bouillon. I have it in there. Some hoisin sauce, some cornstarch to thicken things up, a little bit of soy sauce, some minced garlic, some ground ginger, and some brown sugar. Got the cornstarch back there. And of course, some black pepper. Now I'm going to put the recipe in the first comment down below. I'm going to pin the first comment with the recipe in it. Just because I know when I make these things, you guys are like, ah, oh, you didn't mean recipe. <laughs> so now you can make this with pasta noodles. Okay. You can make this with regular spaghetti. What I'm going to do to kind of keep it oriental, I got some of these here and I've been putting these away because they're a little healthier for you than the ramen, other, the other ramen. And uh, we're going to use two of these and put them together. I think they're about that size. So we're going to use two of those and put them together. Of course, I'm not going to use all that beef. I just wanted to hydrate a bunch. So if I need some for later, I can use it in my own food at home here. So anyway, let me get a stove set up. And I'm going to show you how I put this all together. First thing, of course, we're going to do is do the ramen noodles. Boil them so they're nice and soft. So let me get set up and we'll bring you back. All right, so I got the pasta going over there. That's pretty simple. We'll just cover it up. Now what we're going to do is put the um, freeze dry wholesaler beef in there and I'm just gonna kind of brown it up and heat it up really not brown it because it's already cooked you'll notice I am breaking it apart because it does come in chunks and I kind of want this to be a little bit smaller and broken up so we're gonna put some in there and I had the heat on but I turned it off because it was getting a little too hot as you can tell already <laughs> and that's about enough for what we're gonna be doing here that's the nice part about this particular product is it's already cooked so you could almost hydrate it and just eat it plain I'm just going to break it up a little bit. There we go. Okay. There. So, we got the water going. We got that going. I'm going to let that kind of warm up for a little bit. And then I'm going to stir in some of the uh, garlic and beef broth and everything. First thing you're going to put in is the uh, ground beef. Okay, then you're going to drain the excess fat off it if there is any. Usually in freeze-dried wholesalers, there's no excess fat in it whatsoever. Then you're going to cook in the ginger and the garlic. You kind of cook that until it's fragrant. Then you're going to stir in brown sugar, beef broth, soy sauce, hoisin sauce, and the black pepper and mix it all up together. So we're going to start off with just the ginger and garlic. I have my chopped garlic in there. Just kind of heat that up. And the ginger is in chunks. I didn't chop it up too well, but... Uh, I have to relight that. So give me a few minutes to get this going and I'll bring you back when we put the rest of the ingredients in and see what this tastes like once it's done. All right, so I got the beef broth in here and add in the soy sauce. I was gonna start doing this without being on camera. I'm like, they're gonna really hate me if I don't show them what I'm doing. <laughs> this is the hoisin sauce. I'm putting a little bit less than was recommended because again, I didn't use a whole pound of meat. Now with this, you're just gonna kind of mix it up. Then I'm gonna add the brown sugar to taste. I don't want to add too much of that because then it becomes like almost like candied beef, you know? So, there we go. And I'm just going to kind of break some up because my sugar got clumpy in the, in the storage. There we go. And that should break apart once, once we get going with it. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to let that kind of warm up and simmer in there. And I'll add the cornstarch if I need to. Um, usually, this thickens up pretty quick. Put a little pepper in here. And you see how easy it is to take uh, regular food, like, you know, freeze-dried wholesaler food. People think of it as freeze-dried as being something different. It's just real food with all the moisture taken out. But you see how easy it is to make yourself a pretty decent meal using a very simple recipe and just storing a few things here and there. So let's let that sit out for a little bit, thicken up. I'll add some cornstarch if I need to. And we'll check on our noodles. How are they doing? They're not even boiling yet. So they got a little while. I'll bring you back once we mix it all together and get it going. All right, so I still need to add a little bit of cornstarch to that. I always find it's easier to add a little bit because you can't take it out once it gets too thick and then you have to add water and then the sauce gets thinner and it's a like an ongoing thing. So, I just add a little bit at a time. Whoa, that's done. Let's get that off there. There we go. So, noodles are done. So, there we go. I'm just going to add this to thicken it up. And once it's all done and mixed together, I will show you what this looks like 
and I'll tell you what it tastes like when we come back. All right, so we're all finished up here. Let's take a taste of this and see what it's like. Looks really good. And of course, I tasted the sauce, and the sauce is pretty amazing. So here we go. Mm. That is awesome. And as usual, that beef is really, really good. Um, I've used this beef in so many different recipes now. <laughs> it's amazing. But yeah, it's really, really good. Very simple meal. You saw how easy that was to prepare. Like I said, I'm going to put the recipe down in the description below. Um, now, again, it calls for a pound of beef. I probably used about a half pound. So I kind of halved the recipe. But I'm going to give you the pound recipe. And like I said, if you don't want to buy the individual spices on, you know, in Walmart or wherever you go to shop, you can buy them online from Freeze Dried Wholesalers. They have a whole kit, an entire kit. And there's some interesting stuff that's going to be coming out with that kit later later on in the month probably or maybe next month um, we also have some new products that we're going to be bringing and showing you uh, from freeze dried wholesalers in the next month so definitely stay with us on this if you guys are interested again my link for any of the freeze dried wholesalers food saves you 15 percent. and what i love about it look at that ingredients beef that's it nothing else nothing fancy no preservatives no nothing just freeze dried and ready to go so I thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I know this video ran a little bit long um, for my normal length of videos, but I do hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check their link down below. Like I said, the link saves you 15%. Just click it. Shop as you normally would when you get to checkout. Right up on the top there, it'll say Iridium 242 15% discount. Definitely check that out. Below that, we have our Amazon affiliate store. Don't forget to use that site if you want to help the channel out. Just click the link. Shop as you normally would. We do appreciate when you do that. Our My Patriot Supply link down there. Preparewithiridium.com. Preparewithiridium.com down there. And of course, our Thrive Life freeze-dried food store. Those are the three companies I trust with my food storage. And I hope you guys can trust them too because they're pretty darn good stuff. Thanks for watching. I'm going to go have some lunch. Stay safe and stay prepared.